Before Madeline Kingsbury was a household name in Southeast Minnesota, she was a mother of two, a Mayo employee. And before that, she was a student. Before that, she was just Madeline. That's where the story begins. She was very beautiful. Born June 1, 1996, Madeline Kingsbury was the youngest of three. She grew up just south of the Twin Cities in Farmington, Minnesota. Growing up, she was very loud and talkative and singing all the time and wanted to be the center of attention and she wanted to try everything once. She was very brave. Um, she would jump in the deep end of the swimming pool when she didn't know how to swim, that kind of stuff. Um, she was fun. She was a lot of fun. Her sister Megan describes her as a young and bright girl who loved music, reading, and documenting her life through pictures, often letting her imagination run free. Our dad was at work, so it was us at home. And um, she was usually outside, but she wasn't. So I went to go look for her. She was hiding up in her bedroom, kind of crouched in the corner. And I was like, what are you doing up here? And I saw she had brought in um, like a pile of ladybugs and was playing with and trying to organize the ladybugs. And she named them all Lucy. Madeline's parents divorced at a young age, but stayed close. A cheerleader and a powerful voice in the school choir, Madeline graduated from Farmington High in spring of 2014. She found her new home in Winona, studying health sciences at Winona State. A bunch of us went and helped her move into her dorm, and she was super excited about her dorm. The small town feel in rolling bluffs of southeastern Minnesota captured her heart. She made a lot of friends really quickly. The sorority helped with that. Um, and then in the sorority, of course, she got really close with those girls. In fact, it was Phi Theta Chi sorority sister, Holly Stamsher, who became one of her closest friends. After our first like official sorority meeting, um, I invited her over to my apartment to get to know one another. And uh, then she basically lived with me the rest of freshman year. The duo quickly became attached at the hip. She was just so innocent and goofy, like, but she was insanely smart. Like, you would just look at this girl and be like, how can this tiny goofy package just have this big brain? Um, and so, yeah, she just, it was very impressive. She was just a very impressive and like warm being. Just a door down from Holly lived another student, Adam Fravel, a man who would become a central part of Madeline's story. He was, he was a, a typical normal kid. Born January 29th, 1994, Adam is also the youngest of three. He grew up on a farm an hour south of Winona in the small town of Mabel, Minnesota. He loved sports. He loved football. He, he loved computers. That was a big thing. His sister, Teresa Sis, has many fond memories of growing up with her brother. He was a very loving, very loving brother. Um, I picked on him a lot, a lot growing up. Um, and he, uh, no matter what, he always still came up to me and would hug me, even if I pushed him away, um, told me that he loved me. He, uh, he was a normal kid, a normal brother growing up. In 2012, Adam graduated from Mabel Canton High School and pursued his interest in computers at Winona State. There, he joined a fraternity and in the fall of 2014, met Madeline. I don't think it was super serious at first. Friends say their relationship was off and on, but over time, feelings between Madeline and Adam evolved. It, it got more serious slowly. It wasn't a, a fast burn or anything. Um, they, they took their time. They were very much in love um, in the beginning. Um, they were very happy. Um, you know, he, he was a country boy and she was a city girl. Um, so she basically knew nothing about the country life. Um, and so she really enjoyed learning everything in the country. To Megan, Adam was a very different person when she first met him. He was pretty outgoing and funny and seemed like interested and 
talking to us. And um, I think I first met him, she brought him to my mom's house. In 2017, Madeline made the big decision to move in with Adam across the bridge from Winona in Fountain City, Wisconsin. A short time later, Madeline found out she was pregnant. Their daughter, Ellie, was born in 2018. When she messaged me that I was going to be an auntie, I was scared for her because she was young. Um, they, you know, they were still a young couple. I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, but she was so excited. Now learning the ins and outs of motherhood, friends say Madeline loved being a mom. Adam paused his education and started a factory job to provide for his new family while Madeline finished school. Two years later, the couple celebrated the birth of their second child, Noah, in 2020. Adam's sister says he was especially proud to have a son. When they welcomed Noah into the world, um, that was, you know, that, that was his son, you know, like in, a, in general terms, you know, a lot of men, you know, look forward to having their first son. She wanted her kids to experience everything and she really supported them in anything that they wanted to do, um, even at a young age. <laughs> Barely ever went a night without being with his kids. Um, he always played with them. He was always doing something with them. Sometimes it would irritate me when I would try to have a conversation with him and he was always too busy because he was with his kids. The family moved around southeastern Minnesota for a few years before they moved back to Winona, settling in a townhome on the north side of town. Adam lost his job during the pandemic. At this point, Megan began to see a shift in her sister's relationship. It's kind of hard to describe their family dynamic because it just didn't really seem like he was an integral part of their family unit. Like it really just seemed like it was like Maddie and the kids and then Adam was just kind of there. The change was noticed by others close to Madeline too. Megan says there were attempts to get Madeline to leave Adam, move with her up to the cities. But her sister's dream of her kids having a good relationship with their father held her back. One instant stands out for Megan. My dad and my stepmom went down to pick her up once. I think it was after um, the there was like a choking incident that really freaked her out with Adam. Um, so they went down there to get her and the kids and bring her and them back to their house. And they thought that she would kind of stay, but she went back home. Um, there was a lot of conversations about, you know, how this relationship is not good for her. It's not good for the kids. It's not a great environment. There is no record of police responding to any calls of domestic violence between Madeline and Adam when they lived in Winona. But according to Madeline's loved ones, problems grew. The safety of Madeline and the kids were now in question by friends and family. The relationship between Madeline and Adam ended, but the two continued living together. Madeline became a graduate student in public health at the University of Minnesota and worked at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. She also started seeing someone new. She was really excited to, to start a new chapter, especially with somebody new who actually seemed to care about her, was nice to her. She looked into getting an apartment for her and the kids in a town nearby. During this time, Adam was in the process of moving out of their town home. Mm -hmm. What was his What was his plan after moving out of there? Um, I think I would rather not comment on that. But Adam was still in the picture, and to anyone looking in from the outside, Madeline appeared to be her normal, bright self. Something that was on full display when she met up with her sorority sisters in October of 2022. This weekend was the last weekend I saw her alive. 